All right, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is adding our PowerFlex 525 drive to our system. And again, this is going to be the trainer system that we've been building, and we've uh, kind of re resurrected from you know the the project we did in a 30-day project we did uh, a couple years back. So again, taking this up to 32, and taking it from um, FT View 7 to FT View 10. So um, as we're going to go through this, we're going to you see it's online right now. Um, I don't currently have my servo rack on, so that's not a big deal. It's just that's why the I/O is blinking. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take it offline, and we're going to go ahead and actually not not program it. Let's go offline, and let's add our I/O in there. Um, now this is going to show that the PowerFlex that we're going to be using. Again, this is a, a PowerFlex drive that we just purchased, and we added a new Ethernet card to talk to it. Um, we're, what we're probably going to do it later is add uh, our Stratic switch and everything to get everything. Uh, we're, we're actually building a new trainer for this, but what we're going to do is actually come back and uh, kind of refurb everything after we do this. But let's go ahead and, then, and add this in here. So what we want to do is go and add a new module, and that new module is going to be this Ethernet module right here. So we'll right click this module, we'll get that info, this is the EMT. EMBT, sorry, version six, which is what we need, which is good. So um, that's going to be what we add in our system. So we'll come up here and just paste that in there. We'll get that, add that in there, and this is a version six. So we're going to make sure the firmware is at least compatible. Uh, five, we can change it to six if we want to. Right now, change it to six because it, it it actually is. Uh, six is that good so we'll, we'll call this um, we'll call this uh, trainer Ethernet or we'll call it DRV ETH DRV Ethernet that way we know what it is and the address to this is 10 or uh, actually 192.168.1 and I believe it's 6 so we can double check that through RS links again um, and it, yeah this is 6 and the drive is 7 so uh, what we're going to do is add this in here and we have done so now um, we have our ethernet so when below our ethernet what we need to do is we need to add a new module and the new module is going to be this PowerFlex module. So again, it's just as simple as coming in here, going right clicking, going here, and getting your PowerFlex module, okay? So uh, what you can do is copy all this, uh, but you're probably not gonna find all of it. So what you can do is again, ah, wrong one. Uh, what we can do is come in here and go here, and again, back this up to here. PowerFlex, and you want to make sure you, you select your, your correct PowerFlex, right? So, understand, you know, your PowerFlex and, and what it is, what you're using in your PowerFlex drive. We're, we're just using a uh, 22, we're not using the 22, 22.com E. We are using the embedded Ethernet, that's what we're using, so let's go ahead and pick that. And then what we're gonna do is make sure we, what we're, so to make this easier, we're gonna drive match, if that makes sense. So a lot of times when you come in, you can upload everything, but we wanna drive match our parameters. So with this new feature, with everything the, the way it is now, is again, you can come down here, make sure that this is just drive is a one, Let's see, make sure that the correct settings in here. This is a one horsepower. Okay, it's a great version. Is a five. I believe it is a five point one. So it's five point one. So five point one. The address is one nine two one six eight one and then seven. And the name of this is going to be our trainer uh, power flex five twenty five. And we could separate that a little bit. That way it gives it a better viewpoint. And we can always upload from our drive to get the correct parameters. And this is the same as drive match. So if you think about it that way, 
to make sure that you get everything 100% like tied in perfectly. Right, so this is assuming you've, you've had your drive set up and you've, you've already commissioned your drive, you've already got set up your drive, you've already got everything right, and then you know you basically got everything the way you want it. So again, check in your peripherals, you can add your peripherals if you want. Now your input outputs and stuff like that, the stuff that you want to monitor, uh, again, this really rolls down to um, having the right things. So um, the per parameters and stuff you want to monitor and stuff like that, right? So if you want to have drive logics or, or you know drive control, you, you normally you would think when you're seeing this, right? You have your inputs and your outputs. So your input data, right? Drive status is always th this. If you look at this from the way it used to be, right? The way it used to be is you used to have both of these on the same platform or both of these on the same viewpoint. Like if you were to look at a, a drive match, if you were to look at a drive match on like a, a the version 30 or below, then it would have a drive match. Both of these would look tremendously different, right? Um, and again, when it comes down to it, what we want to do is keep the same platform though, right? So the, the drive status is what we want to look at, right? Drive status is what we want to look at. The output of that is the the drive logic, right? The logic is, is right here, right? So this is kind of what you're going to get, right? So you can always add stuff to it, right? So your output data, so, and then your frequency, right? So your output frequency. Now, again come in here and you can set these and this this is whatever you want to set these to right right so if you want to have more data then you can set these in and have more data right so you can come in here and select different things that you want to have like drive logics um see if we got the stuff we want um not seeing it right off the bat but we'll what we want to do is we want to we, we may come down and actually change this stuff, but we want to actually get this stuff in input right now. Um, so we may we may come back and actually add some stuff to it. But um, the parameters and stuff like that too, you don't have parameter settings like you used to have. Um, you don't have the ability, like I say, you have the drive logics that are currently in there. Now again, the same thing with frequency. You have the frequency, and this is coming back from the end. So you're, you're understanding that you have the ability to control different things like presets and stuff like that so that's what we're going to do um, but just come in I just want you to understand you can you can do that so um, let's go ahead and add this okay so we have a drive uh, the parameters are all in here that's just like what we set before um, and again we want to create it so we created it we close this now let's actually download let's go in here and let's download to our project and our project is right here so let's down download and make sure that everything is talking 100 percent like it should um and again i don't have my i don't have my circus on so don't worry about that don't worry about we're not worried about circus right now again we're we're just getting our drive we're getting our new powerflex drive in there we make sure everything talks we're making sure everything's functional and uh that's just part of again we've done commissioning Make sure that we, we have everything there and everything is talking. So everything is talking. So now if we go into our, so down here you can see everything is talking except for again my Cerakos because I don't have my Cerakos running. But again, now if we come in here, we look for PowerFlex as we name that PowerFlex our, our trainer, right? So if we just typed in trainer and this should give us our PowerFlex, our trainer PowerFlex input outputs. So you see now we have our data that we can control, right? And this is all ethernet driven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start controlling this, right? We can, we can start actually adding different logic for our actual PowerFlex. So um, now that we've actually added this in, let's actually um, look at the, you can look at the drive logic and look at the drive commands and stuff like that. This is actually, um, let's go into the actual monitor tab instead of the edit tab. That way you can kind of see different things and you can kind of you, you can see the the starts and stops. Like if we wanted to start the drive, you can hear the drive started now. Um, if you wanted to have it run at a certain speed command, you can run it at a certain speed command. Um, let's just say 20, and then the drive will actually run. 
Now again, that's actually uh, just showing you how that's done, right? So we can actually turn this off and this issue a stop command. So just showing you how that how that works real quick, just typing in different things. Now again, that, that was a real, real, real minute <laughs> um, drive frequency. So, but when it comes down to it, you can, we're gonna be able to change this. We're gonna come in here and uh, change the, this is the input, so the input is the drive ready. You have the drive ready, active. If you wanna see the active, the active bit should come on. I believe it comes on when we have your, your um, drive active, but generally when PowerFlex drives come on active, they're sensing back a, um, they're sensing back the induction from the motor, so they're sensing back the torque from the motor. This is, we don't really have the motor hooked up right now, so don't, don't take this as you're going to see that active bit all the time on every single PowerFlex drive. Just on the PowerFlex 525, are you seeing that active bit when you hit the start with no motor attached to it? Okay, so just, I wanna make sure you note that because generally speaking in PowerFlex drives, you're only gonna see this active bit when you have the induction coming back, right? When you have the the, the actual um, load being sensed back from that, right? So, but we're able to actually control this stuff and you can see the frequency set and, and stuff like that at frequency and, and all these bits that are there that we can actually monitor now and use. So now that we have this in there, uh, we'll go ahead and conclude and we'll see you guys on the next one.